Hey, thanks for coming back to the last part of the Ultimate Motion Graphics and Kinetic Typography tutorial. My name is Saar, and in this part, we're gonna do some practical things. Well, we're here in Photoshop. This is a document called Example 1. You can download it with other examples for this tutorial in the description. You can see we have a text layer and two groups. This is a U text layer, and the first group contains a completion for the sentence called are awesome, you are awesome. The second group contains another completion saying, and you can do it. The idea is to switch between the two sentences. So you'll first see, you are awesome, and then you'll see, and you can do it. In After Effects, we'll double click the project window to import our file, and make sure you import it as composition, retain layer sizes. Click open, and After Effects will ask you this again, so choose it and click OK. Great, double click on the com to open it, and we want to get rid of these guides, so we'll go to View, Show Guides, great. After Effects imports text layers as PSD layers, but we want to transform it to an editable text. So we'll select the U layer, we'll go to Layer, and convert to editable text. Now if we'll double click it, we can change any parameters we want, but we'll leave it as it is. We'll move the anchor point to the middle of it, and we'll do the same with the other two groups. I want to ungroup the second group, because I can't move each text layer alone, so I'll double click it to get into this group. I'll select the layers and Ctrl X to cut them. Back to our main comp, Ctrl V to paste them. We can now delete this second group because it's empty. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a mat layer, an alpha mat layer. We're gonna go to layer, new, solid, and we'll call this layer mat. And just to remember it doesn't matter what color this layer is, we'll choose a really ugly color. Click OK. And the idea of an alpha mat layer is that it behaves like a mask for another layer. But because it isn't a mask, this layer could be anything. It could be a PNG file, it could be a video, a solid, a text, and pretty much anything else. I'm gonna hide the end and the can do it layers because we are working with the first group right now. We'll show our mat layer and we'll move it to the bottom because we want to see what we're doing. We'll grab the mask tool and we'll draw a mask around the place where the sentence should be. And the matte layer should always be above the layer it should affect. So we'll move it above the first group. And we can rename the first group to R Awesome, because this is the name of the text. And we'll hit this toggle switches and modes button at the bottom. Button at the bottom. Button. <laughs> we'll select our R Awesome comp. And where it says none, we're gonna click it. And we're gonna change it to Alpha Matte. Alpha Matte means that the layer above this layer will behave as a mask. So now you won't be able to see the text unless you move it to the place where the mat is. And this is exactly the effect we wanted to achieve. Hit P on the keyboard to bring up position, and we'll make a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline where the text is not visible. We'll move to the one second mark, and we'll move it up to match with our line, and we'll go to the two seconds mark, we'll copy the first keyframe, and we'll paste it so it goes back down. We'll select our three keyframes, and hit F9 to apply easy ease to them. And using the graph editor, we'll give the second keyframe more space, so the text comes up really fast, it holds for a second, and then goes down. You kinda get this smile in the graph editor. I wanna make the animation faster, so I'll select the keyframes, and holding down Alt and dragging the last keyframe left, I'm making the entire transition faster. We'll preview it, and it looks just fine. So back to our other text layers, we want to apply the matte layer into each one of them. But you can't use the same layer, so we'll duplicate the matte layer by selecting it and Ctrl D, and we'll do the same process we did with the R Awesome comp, choosing alpha matte for each one. So starting with the end, I'm gonna give it a position keyframe outside the matte layer, and then a position keyframe inside the matte layer alongside the U layer. F9 to apply is ease to the last keyframe, and using the graph editor will make the text go down really fast. We can apply easy ease to the first keyframe as well. I'm gonna align those keyframes so that the end text layer will go down just at the time where the R Awesome text layer goes down. So it goes down pretty much simultaneously. Then I'm gonna copy those keyframes and I'm gonna paste them to the Can Do It text layer. I'll select the newly pasted keyframes and I will drag on these squares on the scene to align the text layer again. And that's pretty much it. You just created a dynamic sentence. You can use the same techniques to give the U layer a transition as well. This is a document named Example 2.
We have three text layers that are pretty much the same, but the only difference is that each one of them has different colors. Inside After Effects, double click the project window to import our document. Make sure you import it as composition, return layer sizes, and make sure Photoshop sequence is unchecked. We'll double click it. We'll hide the orange and the red layer at the time, and we're going to create a mask for the pitch layer. Now we can apply keyframes to masks, and this is something new. We'll create a keyframe at the two seconds mark, and at the beginning of the timeline, we'll double click the mask and scale it down so that you won't see the text at all. When you preview it, you can see that it is a constant speed animation. So we'll choose the last keyframe, F9 to apply easy ease to it, and we'll go to the graph editor and make changes to make the animation more interesting. Preview again and again and again until you feel it's okay. Select the mask, Ctrl C to copy it, select the orange layer, you can show it now, Make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline, and then paste it, and do the same thing with the red layer. So I can now align those layers in a way that I'll first see the red layer, after it I'll see the orange layer, and only then I'll see the peach layer. So we're creating a cool transition. If I'll select all the three layers and hit U on the keyboard, After Effects will show me all of the keyframes these layers have. So I can select the first three keyframes and go to the graph editor and I can change their speed simultaneously. And that's really great because I don't need to make changes to each one, even though I can, and sometimes I would want to. So for the last example, I'm gonna use a new document called example three. It has only two objects, the ball and this layer, which is now the floor. By now, of course, you should know how to import a PSD file into After Effects. Double click the comp, and our goal with this animation is to make the ball fall on the floor, but also bounce. So we're gonna give it some key position keyframes. One at the beginning of the timeline in the air, one at the one second mark, where it hits the floor for the first time, then when it bounces up again, falls back to the floor for the second time, so we'll copy the same keyframe we had before, we'll move it up a bit again, and we'll paste the same keyframe again, and if we want, we can do the same thing with less motion, once again. Let's ask our buddy After Effects what does he think about this animation. Your animation looks like shit. We'll select all of our keyframes, F9 to apply easy ease to them, and back to the graph editor. So I want the ball to start falling very slow, but when it hits the floor, I don't want it to wait at all. I want it to start jumping back up right when it hits the floor. And I'm gonna do the same process to, to all of our next keyframes. When the ball hits the floor, it's gonna come up really fast, but stay longer in the air. So eventually you're gonna get something that looks like this. Now, something to remember. After Effects gives you the ability to build your own world with your own physics. So this doesn't have to be the, the right method for you. Though if you're gonna do something different, something that's gonna look uh, not realistic, you gotta make sure that you know how to use the graph editor perfectly. Otherwise, it's gonna look ridiculous. But if you watched all of the parts of this tutorial, and with a little bit of practice, you're gonna be the best and it's not even a question. But where do you go from here? Hmm, well, first thing you can do is you can subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna upload more and more tutorials in the future. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me in the comments. And seriously guys, never forget to use Google. Most of the problems I face as a motion graphics artist are easily solved through a 20 seconds Google search. And as always, thanks for checking out Creative Tutorials.